Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Level Up. Today we are bringing you a training that our brokerage did this past week on how to never lose a client again. I think a lot of times we get really wrapped up in the day-to-day business and sometimes we lose track of our past clients or sphere of influence that we want to keep in touch with. So this episode is all about how to use your CRM effectively to make sure that you're constantly in contact with everyone in your database so that you never lose a client again. Apologies in advance for the uh, the quality of the sound. It's not all that great, but you'll definitely be able to hear it. And I hope that you're going to be able to get a lot of great advice and learn a lot in this episode. Thanks so much and have a great week. Building a successful real estate career requires you to adapt, pivot, and constantly master new skills. We're Katie and Daniel Steinfeld. We've built our own innovative brokerage, and in this podcast, we've assembled actionable tips and strategies that you can implement to take your business to its maximum potential. It's time to level up. Level up. All right, we will get started. Um, so obviously this is a very um, popular topic with the amount of people that seemed interested in it, but um, just a, a, Aline did bring it up and I, I wanted to thank him for bringing this up because I do think it's a really important topic to discuss, especially as we come into the new year, um, just new opportunities and how to really use our CRM effectively. So I tried to create this presentation based on where everybody's at, whether you're a beginner or whether you've been using a CRM and just ideas on how to use it more effectively and just kind of get you thinking about next steps to really streamline things for yourself. And if anybody wants to jump in in the chat, I'll be keeping an eye on that, guys. So thanks for for coming virtually as well. Okay, so a few reminders before we get started. Um, Number one, using a CRM, deciding on which one to use is not rocket science. I know sometimes we overthink this aspect of our business, and you really don't want to make it more complicated than it needs to be. It's, you know, a really simple, I mean, I say it's simple, and I know getting over it is really tough, but I think that you just need to remember that you got to choose one and figure out ways to work with it. (laughs) Um, All right. So, and then the other tip for you guys, and we'll get into a little bit more, but it can be really overwhelming to get started. Or if you've been using a CRM, but you haven't been using it effectively, it can be hard to take all of the clients that you have and really make them um, work within your CRM and make it work for your day to day. So make sure you're just taking those small daily actions step by step to, to making those goals that you want for yourself and for your, for your CRM. Um, don't compare your database to anybody else's database. Everybody treats it so differently. Um, I think there's a couple of important things to remember. Hi. Um, number one, there's different people use CRMs differently depending on the way they're structuring their business. So a lot of times, um, you know, you've got people that use online leads, have thousands of people in their database, and that database will look very different than somebody that might really be nurturing relationships, have a really strong repeat referral business. Um, I remember when we were at the Buzz Conference hearing Tom Story speak about his database and how he's got only a couple of hundred people on his database. And he runs a really strong team in the Toronto area. And that was very interesting to me. And it's because he's got a very strong repeat referral business and he only needs a couple hundred people on there to get that business the way he wants it to to be set up. So... (coughs) Sorry, I just swallowed my gum. (laughs) Just keep that in mind. Um, And then this is the key. A strong CRM plan is is the key to building a a really strong repeat and referral business. And I think that's ultimately what we would all like to have. It just makes your life easier, makes your business run a lot quicker more efficiently. You're not spending as much on advertising and marketing and the relationships are a lot easier uh, to, to build and maintain. And the idea here is it's just really about maintaining those relationships and growing them over the years. Um, The technology shouldn't be the focus. It's really about the relationships at the end of the day. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so here's the agenda. Um, So in terms of how to start, 
for those, okay, so raise your hands. Who has a CRM right now? Most people. But I don't use it. But you don't use it. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's that's a hang up that a lot of people have. Christiana, great. Uh, she's got one. So it's good that we all have a CRM. So we don't have to spend too, too much time on that. And Richard has one as well. Thank you. Um, okay, so again, don't overthink it if you don't have one. Um, there's lots of different options out there, so it can be hard to make a decision because there's so many options, but just kind of key considerations. And over my career, I have switched CRMs based on how I want to use it. So, you know, you might have an op have a have a point in your career where you do end up doing that depending on where your business goes, but just some key considerations. Number one is the cost. You don't have to be spending, you know, hundreds of dollars on a CRM unless you're looking into bringing online leads at which point then, you know, the cost is going to go up, but you're obviously paying for something. Um, your connection to your prospecting strategy, make sure the CRM that you have connects back to how you want to build your business. Again, if you're looking at online leads versus nurturing, um, maybe your, your current database, your, your sphere of influence, um, that might look a little bit different. And then just some opportunities um, like managing the sales process with different tasks, um, sorting your contacts, keeping track of how many times you've contacted people on your list is really great. Um, <clears throat> maintaining consistent follow-up with people. Um, that's obviously something that's one of the main things it's got to tie in with your prospecting strategy and then just some up, like some more advanced things, um, as you get into your CRM a little bit more creating workflows to make, you know, just your job more efficient day to day, building those email templates so that you can not have to be spending so much time on the back end of things scheduling meetings, integrations with other um, apps like MailChimp or your calendar and things like that. So those are all just considerations to keep in mind as you have your own CRM and, or if you're looking to, um, to get a new one or get one for the first time. Okay, so using, so it's, it's one thing to have a CRM, it's another thing to use it. As Hassan says, like a lot of us don't actually use it. We just kind of have it in the background. And the key is to really live in your CRM. That's the one system that is really going to keep your business going and just make sure that you don't lose any potential client that comes your way. So these are just a few stats just to keep in mind. Um, the average return on investment for CRM for every dollar spent is $8.71. That was a stat a couple of years ago, but it's probably similar now. Um, so obviously the return on investment is great. Um, CRM applications can increase sales by up to 29% and sales productivity by up to 34%. So it's a little bit, I mean, obviously it's about ret retaining your current database and, and building your business, but it's also about making you more productive. And I think sometimes um, when we have a CRM, we just have it to kind of like house all of our clients, but we don't necessarily look to it as some something that can make us more productive through workflows and, and different email templates and things like that. <laughs> um, and then 47% of cold CRM users said that their CRM had a significant impact on customer retention. Sorry, I've got like one little piece of gum in my throat that's like, <laughs> I'm just going to break. and jump in with any questions guys if, or comments um, based on your perspective. Okay, so we all know, I mean, these are just some, uh, some additional reminders. A CRM is basically like an oven for your potential clients. They're heating your clients up. So they're turning the cold leads or the cold connections into warm connections, warm connections into the hot connections, and then hot connections into ultimate business for yourself. So you got to think of it that way. And that's why it's so important to just live in your CRM all the time. Um, the potential for repeat and referral business is massive. Um, this is where you're going to build that. And customers stay loyal to you and your personal brand because you're constantly in connection with them throughout the year. And obviously the risk of losing business, which is our biggest fear and something that happens to probably all of us um, many times um, is, is less because you're going to be in contact with these people constantly. Any questions so far? No? All right. Okay, so a few key fundamentals. <clears throat> Tag, tagging your contacts. Who tags their contacts right now? Who has a CRM? Yes. Yes. Okay. A couple people. 
Um, now, like it, it's it's a you don't want to tag too much because you don't want to have too much coming at you and like feeling like oh I have to give different content to all of these different types of people, but. The more tags you have, the more you can track things, the more you can um, have potential to definitely, uh, I guess, just create more customized messaging and communication with those individuals. Um, so these are just like kind of a list of different ways you can tag people. Um, feel free to chime in if there's any tags that you guys use yourself. Um, but it's just about looking at your business and what kind of content you're going to be putting out on it for next year. Like, are you going to be doing seminars for first time home buyers, investors, first time home sellers, renters? Um, though, like, you know, obviously you want to know who in your database can get value from those types of seminars that you're putting out. Um, when it comes to pet owners and kids, like maybe you're doing drop buys, maybe you're like giving, you know, a little summer gift pack to families with kids or contacts with kids. Um, you're just doing little pop buys here and there. Um, it's good to know who has kids. So you're not missing out on any opportunities. Um, people in your farming area, maybe you're doing like a weekly up market update for a particular area. So having all those people in your database and tagged for your farm um, is a great way to segment those. So it's all about segmenting your people and just finding different opportunities. And, you, and you'll build on it as you go. But the important thing is that as you're adding people in, you're tagging them. Because if you've got a list of like 500 people in your database, but you don't have any tags for them, um, it's going to be a big job to go back and tag them all. So if you haven't done that, that's okay. I go back to my previous tip, which is like start day by day, five people a day, just going through those contacts and taking them appropriately. That's all you really need to do. It shouldn't be thought of as like, you don't want to make it like a huge job where you're sitting down with 500 people and trying to get it all, all done in one day. So tags is really important. Um, and then also the information that you have about people. Like I can say that in my database right now, there's definitely probably a third that's literally just like a name and an email address or a name and a phone number. I don't even know who these people are. Maybe they came in as a realtor.ca lead, but I didn't actually put any additional information about them. So I really don't know who they are, how I can reach out to them, how I can bring them value. So again, it's about finding ways to bring people value, to feel like you've got a, a more personal connection with these individuals. Um, so there's some considerations there birthdays, anniversaries, um, their spouses' names. I mean, people love it when you know their kids' names or their pets' names. So having that information at the tip of, uh, just to be able to use is really great. Um, lead source is a good one. Um, as you build your business, you want to know where these people are coming from. So is it a realtor.ca lead? Is it from an open house? Like, it's good to know that so that when you look over the course of your year at where most of your business came from, you can identify maybe where you have some strengths. Maybe you want to do a shift to doing more open houses because you tend to really connect with people in open houses and get business that way. So knowing that is really great. Um, also from a lead source perspective, just who, maybe you have like a lot of like certain people that refer you a lot of business. So you want to know about those people as well and make sure that you're really taking care of those you know, people that are sending you business on a consistent basis. Um, the lead type also helps, like it kind of goes back to the whole tagging thing, because if you're doing specific content, or maybe you have a news story or a report that you come across for the condo market, that would be a great thing to just send off to, to all of your condo owners or, um, you know, people that are looking to get into the condo market. Um, it's, it's all about just really customizing the content that you're sending out to people, but also doing it at a mass scale. So it's not taking so much of your time and you're not doing it one by one. Um, addresses of where they live. Um, if you want to send like handwritten notes, do pop buys. I mean, I've, I've had to like go back to my transactions and double check on the agreement of purchase and sale or on the fin track where they live because I haven't kept um, that information in my CRM, which is really time consuming. 
um, maybe where they work, if they have any other properties like investment properties, like people love to know not only their primary residence, but also how are their investment properties doing from an appreciation standpoint and from a market standpoint. So I know that's a lot of information. And, and again, the key here is just to have the information there so that slowly you can figure out how to use it. Um, because you're not going to use it all um, in, in, in a month or in a year even, but it's all about just having it so you can see the opportunities down the line. Any questions about this? No, nope. I'm looking at the chat too, guys. Feel free to chime in if you want or uh, just put in the question in the chat bot box. Um, Great quote, never put the burden of the follow-up on the lead. That's our job, not theirs. Um, I think sometimes we get offended. I get offended if somebody goes off and, and does a transaction with another agent. Well, that's my, my fault, not theirs. Um, I should have been the one following up with them from the beginning. And I think all of us, like I've had discussions with some of you, like I think all of us do realize that it is um, part of our job to do that. Um, and so if we lose the lead, it's just, that it, it happens, we're not perfect. But this session is all about how to really strengthen the connections you're having so that doesn't happen. I have something to add here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go ahead. Um, sometimes I like I don't want to be that annoying salesy guy. Yeah. And it's, sometimes it's hard to like fake it. Mm -hmm. How's the family? Really, you want to sell them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. How do you de like? I guess there's no way to determine, but like, yeah, you want to follow up, but then sometimes I'm like, okay, like, do I look like that salesy guy? You know, yeah. I'm like, give me this, this butter, or whatever. And mm -hmm. so maybe they might get turned off by that, or like, how, what's, what's the strategy there? What I, okay, so what I do is I'll just send comparables or for right. sale. Yeah. Like, yeah, I sent you some, some listings, check them out. Right. Is this for people that are looking to get into the bit or like, are these just like, this is like someone, let's say someone that says, Oh yeah, I, I want to buy a condo soon. Let's okay. be in touch. Right. And okay. then they leave you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I was like, are you screwing around a fee? Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's where, this is where this whole thing came from. Cause I feel like I was kind of spending time on the wrong leads maybe, or yeah. like, how, how do you know who serious and who's not? Yeah. And then sometimes like, hey, this guy's not serious. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, I bought a place last week. Yeah. I'm like, oh, sh I didn't want to push him. Right. I didn't know he was like, you know, mm -hmm. in such a time crunch. So yeah. that's, that's kind of the, what I've run into. The, yeah. I don't want to be like that pushy guy, but I still want to be like, okay, I'm on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, like, well, does anybody else want to comment about that? Before I chime in, this is this is very common. I think like, it's very important to say like that. Yeah, so I also explain the same thing. I guess it's yeah. I guess it comes yeah. with the territory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it it comes back to what you think of yourself and what you think you're projecting. Whereas I don't think any of you guys in this room are hard nosed salespeople. Like, and I don't think it comes across that way. I think sometimes it feels like that. But if you don't not necessarily ask for the business, but if you're not there and showing up for the business people don't know that you want it. Maybe people think you're too busy because you're not following up with them. So I think kind of thinking about it in that respect, like if you're not doing those certain things, then maybe they, they're going to think that you're just not available for them, not too good for them. You know, you, you, you've got too much else going on. Um, so maybe switching just the way you think about that, but we'll also get into different ways you can communicate with people throughout the year. So it's not like, Hey, yeah. is it time now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, represented buyer comes into an open house, right? Like, and they love the house. They're super motivated. They're constantly in contact with you. Like they might, they're wanting to make an offer. So like they're just constantly responding to you, but then maybe they decide it's not for them and then they're gone. Like, and like, it feels like they've ghosted you, but the thing is like their, their, that level of priority has gone down for them. And so it's just, it's just human nature. People, it, it's like, look at like probably all the unresponded emails you have right now. Like, you know, people reach out to me for things that I was interested in. Um, like I have a, a plumber plumbing company that I reached out to a couple of days ago to book something. The tenant went ahead and done it, did it herself. And so I don't need it anymore. And she's following up with me just to check in to see if I need the appointment. And I'm not responding. What is wrong with me? I'm like, I, I don't want to be that person, but it's just, 
my, I don't have the, t- I didn't have the time. Like I just, well, I just, I didn't make it a priority. I do have the time. I just, yeah, yeah. I'm being an asshole. Human psychology 101, from my experience, when someone is truly interested, they're all over us. When someone is thinking about it for the spring, it feels like they are ghosting us, but don't lose heart. Just keep on um, to stay in touch with them with valuable info. Yeah, until closer. They Exactly. Like that's that's the key. And that's what a CRM is all about. It's really about just nurturing that lead until they're ready to make that decision to work with you. And if you're not doing that, they're going to move on to somebody else that is either nurturing them or sending them a postcard every single week because they just see that person. Uh, the question is a touch point, but even with the interest rate change, it's a touch point now just to keep them updated to make sure that they understand that circumstances might impact the position they were in yesterday, potentially, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, to me, the theme is just, you can, you can never do too much but you can do too little for somebody, right? Like it's possible to not do enough, but I don't think there's such thing as overdoing it, right? Yeah. What's the bad thing about contacting someone too many times, especially if they're not getting back to you, you're not getting the answers you need. The worst case scenario is you still don't get the answers, but you got to get out of your own head. We're we're all in our own head with that. Like I'm the same. Like if I contact someone twice without a response, I'm like, all right, I'll wait for them. But they're never contacting until the next time and the next time and the next time. Yeah. Um, okay. So moving on um, in terms of who to add, I know that's a question we get often a lot from people that are just starting out. Mm-hmm. Everyone, add everyone. I, there's not anybody that you shouldn't have in your database. And I know that seems very overwhelming, but like, again, it's about the daily week goals for adding new people. And over time, mm-hmm. you'll probably end up running out of people like on your social feeds and like past, cl- past colleagues or whatever it is. And that's when you'll go out and start having conversations, starting doing those seminars every quarter and adding those people into your database, have open house people. Like there's not a, there's not a, like a a number goal really, but it's really about, especially when you're starting out, um, your sphere of influence is how you start. Question for you. Do we have to roll castle at all? What's that? Do we have to roll castle regulations for adding email? For email, yeah. If you guys are doing like an email newsletter, yeah, technically you'd want to get their permission to have them. But like if you're just doing like personal reach outs or, you know, things like that, then that's something that you can do. That's not a problem. So when you say everyone, like your dentist, your kid's teacher, like everyone? Yeah. 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 Even people who will never be a client. Okay. Okay. I've been like saying, I've been. It's just you picky about mm-hmm. thinking they're never going to use me. Or, but they may like, refer you if they keep seeing but, your, yeah. your yeah. Like, The CRM is built to bucket people in such a way that they've got different reasons to be in there, right? They might not be part of your client generating stuff, but it might be part of referral stuff. It might be suppliers. It might be, I don't know. Like, it, it, it's just other regions. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and the way that you're able to leverage that with the information you've got. Like, even still though, it just shows that I, I think your ability to hyper database everybody is going to pay dividends at some point. You know, yeah. you might not reach out to them for a while because they're completely out of left field, but they're there when you need to sort by X. Mm-hmm. Oh man, this guy, I forgot about this guy. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I mean, it's, this is more for people that are starting out because a lot of people are like, well, I don't have anybody. I don't know anybody, but you do. So just start adding those people um, for people that already have a database. Don't start like, you know, getting, going back to your like kindergarten class and adding those people, but like, you know, you just add people over time. And I know like Richard has a great goal every single week of adding like real quality people into his database. And like, it works, it gets him like potential appointments and like, you know, sets the, the, the stage for, for this next year in terms of his performance. All right. 80% of sales require five follow-up calls after initial contact and only 44% of salespeople, I'm sorry, 44% of salespeople give up after one follow-up. I think we're all guilty of that. I'm one of them. Yeah. (laughs) I think we're all guilty of that. For sure. Um, you guys cringe on like the second and third call, one and three, yell that. Like, <laughs> just hold it up there. 
Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like we, again, we're in our own heads. We're saying they're not responding to us. So I'm not going to send out another message until they respond back. They've lost your email. They've never, never responding or they've read your text message and they've got 10 other text messages ahead of you now, and they're not going to respond to it. So it's, it's, it's all about the follow-up. <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, you never know. And like, you've just got to keep doing it. Like, don't, it, it's, it's about like, don't take offense. Don't take it personal that people aren't reaching out. Like you're doing the action of reaching out to them. That's all you can control. You can't control when or how they're going to respond, but just keep doing it. All right. So types of communication. So this kind of goes back to Aline's question before is like, how are you communicating with these people? Um, so things to consider. Number one, where is your focus and who is your ideal client? You obviously can't if you've got hundreds of people in your database with different interests and different things going on. You might not necessarily be able to reach out to them as consistently as maybe some of the people that are like your main focus or your ideal client. Um, the whole idea of personal versus automated is really important. And when talking to people, some people have a preference. Some people love the automation and just want to send like mass emails out constantly, but other people struggle with that because they want it to be more personal and they always want to have a personal touch to it. They don't want to feel like they're spamming people, but it's important to have a mix especially as you get busier, as your business grows, you're not going to be able to personally reach out to the, the people you want to um, every single year. And the key is you can't just be reaching out to them once a year. It's got to be more constant. So you've got to figure out a way to be able to manage that so that you're actually following through. Um, so just some examples of like personal versus automated messages you can send out to people. Um, obviously, birthday messages, home anniversaries, um, a quarterly market report, which I'll get, I'll dive into a little bit more, which is something I do, which I find is really effective. Um, pop buys, appreciation events. And then if you're on, obviously, hopefully you, you're following all these people on social media so that you can send direct messages or make a comment on a post that they put up. All of those are very personal ways of making contact with those people. On the automated side, um, if you've got a newsletter or a market update every single month, um, maybe that's something you're thinking of doing next year, but that's a great way to capture your entire database in one go every single month. Um, maybe you're looking to do seminars next year. That's an invitation you can send out to them. Um, listing alerts, you know, maybe they're in a certain neighborhood and they want to be kept updated every every time a new listing comes out on their street or in their building or something like that. Like it shouldn't be so generic that you're literally sending 50 listings out to them in like Mississauga every day, but like maybe they are interested in knowing what's coming out in their immediate area. And that's something that's automated. Um, seasonal home checklists. And then, you know, if you are doing social media ads, you can put people people's emails into um, an ad, ad campaign and make sure that they're getting your ads as well. Oops. Okay. So this is the quarterly market update. I know I've talked to you a couple of you guys about this, but I find it's really effective because again, it's a more personal touch. It's more specific to their particular situation, but it's automated in the sense that once you set up the searches and Stratus, you just have to go back every single quarter and pull up what the results of the search. So basically what I do is I go into Stratus. I, if it's a freehold property that the, 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 uh, the client owns, um, I'm doing like kind of like just like a little area around their home. So it's more specific to that area. Or if it's a condo, it makes it really easy. You just put in the condo address and then you save the search. And then that saved search will be in your list. And every three months, when I'm on the ball, <laughs> I will send them just, and honestly, I will usually just do a link. I'll just say, here are the recent sales. I'll do a little blurb about what's been going on in the market, make it a little bit more personal. How are the kids? Hope things are going well, whatever. Um, and just send them, them out that email. Sometimes they'll respond. Sometimes they won't. It doesn't really matter to me. All I know is I'm sending it out every single quarter and they're aware of it. You can make 
what you want with it. Like it could be very time in in intensive, or it could be something that's a quick link, which is what I like to do. And it's just basically all the info that, that they need. Um, and then if you want to take it a step further, you can always make it a more templated email. Um, you know, like our, with our OTV Friday emails, like we just have, we literally just copy and paste those sections every single week into an email and then just populate it. And when we're organized some, some weeks, I will be, you know, kind of filling it out through the week. So I know what to send out. Other times we're kind of doing it Thursday and then like, shit, we forgot to do it this week. So, you know, there'll, there'll be, you know, times where you're on the ball and other times where you're not so much, but making it as easy as possible for yourself. Definitely with the saved part of the search um, is key. And then this connects back not only to a more personal touch because it's their particular area. It's not a generic, like this is what's going on in the Toronto real estate market, but um, it also is, it, it's automated in the sense that you've got the safe search there and it's really not taking you a lot of time. Yeah. So it's literally 32 Camden and then T I, I do T minus. I, I was always taught that way. So like going back 90 days. So I'm not even having to adjust anything in the report. It's just running it and then taking these email. Here's the link. So done and done. Last update, T or sold date? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Sold date T oh, minus 90. Yeah. Good. I mean, as I said, like I'd say probably a quarter of people get back to me and the rest, they'll reach out to me when they're ready or if they have any questions. So I'm not tracking so much the responses. I really don't care. All I know is like I'm responsible for sending this out every quarter. What, what they do with it is totally fine with me. Um, and that's why I don't put too much work into it, like in terms of like a video and that kind of stuff, because I don't, it's not worth my time, um, at least at this point. Um, but again, I, I find it's just a great way to be personally, like giving them a personal contact and, and something that's more um, specific to their, their situation situation. So do you do this? Like, do you have set days in your calendar that you send this out or like for everyone yeah. or you have like from their so date type of thing? Yeah, I usually like the, the from their close date is when I'll start the quarterly market update with them. Um, okay. And I try to space it out because there's like, I, I should go back into my serum because there's definitely some that I have where it's bunched okay. up in like a few days every quarter, which then it just becomes overwhelming to do. So trying to space it out, like it doesn't have to be every quarter on the quarter, like it, yeah. you, you just want to, you know, as long as you're reaching out to them every, every few months, um, that's what I find is, is, is the most important. All right. Thanks. And the other thing I will add to my emails when I send it out, I say to them, and if you know of anybody else that would like a similar report, either, you know, whether somebody in the building or the area or a friend or family, just let me know. I'm happy to set one up. It's not a big issue. And, you know, you sometimes get people that will reach out to you as a result. Okay. So reach out. I think like I've told some of you guys this before, but reach out until they tell you to stop. <laughs> Don't stop. Just keep going. I mean, some people might think you're annoying and they'll tell you if, if it's too much, but otherwise just keep going, keep doing it. It's going to be worth it. Yeah. Like se seasonal changes is, is, is a good time to do it too. It's just, if you have too many people uh, on the quarter relief part, sometimes it might get a little bit too overwhelming. So spacing it out is also um, important. All right. Dangers. <laughs> um, so your CRM management and follow up with people that aren't right away clients, that's the thing that's going to you're, you're going to fall back on or you're not going to do when you start to get busy. So this is going to help you get busier. But the moment you get busier, that's when you won't do the follow ups that you need to do. So you, you have to remember that. And it's really about trying to find ways, structuring your days, whether it's like, you know, being in your CRM in the morning and doing the follow-ups that you need to do or whatever it might be. But this is what falls apart. And I can show you my CRM right now. It's literally like a hundred tasks that I haven't done yet, just because first of all, it's not really my priority right now, but also because I got busy and it, it's fallen behind. And that's the thing that takes, takes the back seat when I got, when I get busy. Um, so the, the idea is asking yourself the question, what can you do to keep your system working when you are busy? And some ideas, and this is kind of like the next step as you really solidify and, and get a really good system working for your CRM, automations and workflows. So those automated contacts, 
but also CRMs, most CRMs, especially real estate CRMs, allow you to build in workflows. So when you start working with a client, you're, you know, might send out an automated email, or maybe you have a video series that you can kind of help guide them through the process without having to do that personally yourself. Like I know Maria, for example, is working on um, doing videos, reviewing the different forms that clients will sign throughout the process. And instead of her having to take an hour out of her day to walk through that before she does that, obviously she'll, she'll do that if people want, but she'll send out that video and that takes them through it in their own time. So it helps save her some time um, when working with clients. So the workflow piece is something maybe we can get into in another session, but um, there's definitely a lot of opportunity there uh, as you start working with clients and identifying areas where you can kind of make things work for you. Um, another thing that we always talk about is like hiring assistants. So assistant, I didn't, assistant, I guess that makes sense. Um, but, <laughs> you know, a, somebody like a, a virtual assistant that can maybe a few hours a week go into your CRM and pull the quarterly market updates. Like that's not something you need to be doing. If you guys are busy and you're out meeting with clients, you can have somebody else. You can train somebody else on how to do those more automated or more um, mundane tasks that are, are pretty easy to train on. Again, planning out your day, trying to get the follow-ups done first thing in the morning or where you find you're not as busy with, with client work and with distractions. Um, will really allow you to stay on top of your CRM and making your CRM your most used something system. <laughs> so yeah, like if you've got, when you open up your um, like Google Chrome or whatever browser you use, if you have the homepage set to your CRM, um, if it's a cloud-based CRM, or if you're, you know, j just any way you can think that will keep constantly reminding you that this like Stratus or MLS or end your CRM is where you should be spending most of your time. And I find most of us don't do that. Um, so it's really about getting into the habit of going into your CRM daily, seeing what you can do, what opportunities are there, what you can work on, all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Number one. One danger that ties into this also is the other place you might go to be doing your CRM, like we talked about, is in the social media world. So it's a danger that you get distracted while you're in there, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. you need to go in there with the plan rather than go in there knowing it's something that you're going to get done while you're in there. Because it sounds the same, but once you get in there and you're not right on the CRM element, you don't really get to the CRM element, right? Mm -hmm. And the other thing, which is just, I mean, you probably noticed it's like, all of these things are feeding to the, the dangers are all not big. These are all like different ways you're not doing it or reasons you're not doing it. So there's no danger of doing it not fully effectively, if that makes sense, right? Like if your content is a little bit off, that's better than not doing it. And so, yeah. and this is coming from someone who doesn't do it very well. So that's why I'm not standing. I'm, <laughs> I'm part of the audience here. But it, it, it is telling that everything there is a different version of, leaving it or not, you know, committing the time and all those sorts of things. Those are what the dangers are, just forgetting to do it or not doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now with things likely slowing down for a lot of us with December, typically holidays, things are a little bit slower. People aren't responding as quickly. Um, it's really about taking the time now um, to implement a strategy for yourself with your CRM. If you have, don't have a CRM, get a CRM. If you do have one, but you don't have a lot of contacts in there, start adding contacts in there daily. If you have them in there, but they're not segmented or you don't have as much information about them, start taking three or four people a day and adding as much information. Like wherever stage you're at, you can always improve your CRM strategy. So it's really about finding ways to do that now when I think most of us aren't as busy so that once you get into the busier seasons, hopefully January, everybody's like rocking and rolling with lots of sales, lots of clients. Um, you've got something working on the back end. And again, it's the small daily actions. That's the thing. It's so easy to look at something like the whole, like your 200 contacts and think, shit, I'm never going to get through all of these people. I'm never going to be able to set up a quarterly, you know, market update for all of these people. Just take it step by step and just say, okay, even if it's just one person a day, that's all like 
it, it's going to make a big difference in the grand scheme of things. So you just got to remember, it's got to be broken down really, really small. And you'll find that you'll get a really solid way of, of, of segmenting and, and handling your CRM for 2023. One more thing to add to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2018 Christmas time. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big Christmas. I don't have a family or anything. So I didn't have any real plans or anything. Sometimes there's a big opportunity during these yeah. times. Because everybody's kind True. of sleeping and in yeah. the holiday yeah. mode. Mm-hmm. But then there's a ton of clients out there. I did three leases in two weeks. Hmm. And it was literally, be- and I remember one guy was like, I can't believe you answered your phone. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't have a Christmas party, whatever. Like, let's go see places. Right. Yeah. So if you don't have anything really going on, this might be a time that mm-hmm. just maybe do a couple of leases. Because there's a lot of people that don't celebrate Christmas. Yeah. There's people that are still coming okay. to city or yeah. this is their only time off yeah. from work mm-hmm. to, to see places. So it could be an opportunity as well to. Sure. And if not, then enjoy your Christmas. Party. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's true. It's in the early. It's in the early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's a great tip. Like those small daily things. Like do a video like once every couple of days or something like that. Because we can always learn more. Whatever CRM system we have, like most of us are probably just using the basics right now. So just like knowing number one like how to use the mo- make the most of the basics, but also like what the advanced features are that you could maybe look to uh, for the future. But yeah, I, I've switched over to exact, like I was using copper and then I wanted to try exact just because I knew a lot of you were using it as well. And yeah, like I, right now it's just like basics and I need to like, you know, brush up on some of the more like advanced stuff. Um, no bus yeah. understanding that, like, you know, some <laughs> exactly, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Just basic things. Yeah. I don't yeah. want any just, like, right. comprehensive or, uh, yeah. I don't, um, you have so much time on the exact I need so just that little basic size. Yeah. yeah. So once you start with one, how hard is it to switch them? Do you have to, like, like no. It, like, it's just basically easy. downloading the Excel file and uploading i mean there might be little things like i found like the tagging got a little mixed up like there's certain things but honestly that's the other thing like if you're if you commit to one don't feel like you always have to use it you can always switch over and i did really like copper yeah i was gonna ask yeah i the only reason why i switched is because i knew a lot of us were using it and i just wanted to see how a more real estate CRM worked versus like I found copper wasn't as like real estate focused. So yeah. there, I think like I found you kind of had to take what they did for other industries and make it work for real estate. But honestly, like sometimes it crosses my mind. I'm like, maybe I should switch back to copper because I do love that integration and how it tracks your conversations as well because you're through Gmail, right? You so you're task reminders every day. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I mean, most of them from what I've seen and the ones that I've used in the past, like they all do very similar things at the end of the day. I would say, you know, even mobile friendly, I don't know if exact is, but I think that that's... Yeah. And because they all have cool tools and a lot of the cool tools are just cool tools. Yeah. Like they're not yeah. really yeah. good at all. Like you talk about what's actually burdening your business. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it inspires you to do things you didn't think about, which is good. But it's, it's that it's the integrations like you said, all the yeah. big ones are going to integrate with whatever you need. But if you've got other things you're using, whether it's it could a be website, Legion, it could be a website, it could be yeah, mm-hmm. like um, accounting software, like depending on what you want it for, the more you can have everything you use talk to each other, the better. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's why we use transaction desk instead of what was like the other one. A lot of people were on a different transaction software, but mm-hmm. because it's part of MLS, it's just easier when things talk to each other. Yeah. Um, and now, yeah, even things like Realm are going to integrate with CRMs apparently. So like, hmm. I would suspect would Popper good. and Exact are big enough. Like all the big ones are going to integrate. But if you find something that looks good or you get pitched by somebody on like some obscure new cool thing, that would be the one thing I'd look out for is mm-hmm. make sure it's still got the APIs and the stuff that talks to everything else. Nope. Cool. All right. Well, I'll shut down the, the Zoom, I guess. Thanks for coming, guys. Um, and then this is posted also to our Facebook group. So if you want to come back and re-listen, re-watch, go for it. I'm glad it was helpful. And again, like if you guys want to like sit down one-on-one with us just to kind of go through some of these ideas or kind of, if you feel like, oh my God, that was like a lot of stuff that was just thrown at me. 
um, we can kind of help break it down and create some goals maybe over the next month or, or so just to get you started. All right. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Christiana. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Level up, 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 level up,